Good morning and welcome to the Highway Annual Operational Report Updates webinar. This is Erin Jamison Koenig with AIM. Thank you for joining us today. We are recording this webinar and a link for the recording will be sent to all participants later today. If you have any technical difficulties during this webinar, please call the AIM office at 317-237-6200 and tell them you are having trouble with the webinar. Please note if the webinar audio cuts off suddenly and does not return, please hang up and dial back into the system using your telephone rather than the speakers on your computer. Due to the nature of webinars, your phone line is muted and you will not be able to ask questions verbally. However, there is a question feature on the toolbar that should be appearing on the upper right-hand side of your screen. We will answer questions throughout the webinar. Please note that there is a delay from the time you submit a question to the time we receive it. Please do not wait until the very end to submit your question. I will now hand it over to Shannon with the State Board of Accounts to get things started. Good morning and welcome. Um, today we're going to go over the new annual report for the highway. Uh, we've made some changes to the report. We kind of wanted to get them out there. Uh, before we get started, we're going to go around the room and let you know who all is in the room. Uh, my name is Shannon Lopez, and I'm a county director for the State Board of Accounts. Myla Call Purdue University, LTAP. Debbie Gibson, Director of Audit Services of State Board of Accounts. Jackie Clements with the Association of Indiana Counties. Zachary Guest, General Auditor Supervisor, and Doc. Todd Caldwell, Director of Audit Services with the State Board of Accounts. So the annual highway operational report has been around for quite some time. Um, it's required by Indiana Code 8174.1. All counties are required to file the report annually, and municipalities with populations over 20,000 are required to file them. Historically, the State Board of Accounts has been the keeper of the form, and we've basically just collected the forms and have not really utilized them for any financial information. Uh, the content in the reform has not been updated for several years. With the recent changes in Indiana Code 8-14-1 for the MBA distributions, which became effective July 1 of 2017, uh, the code changed and added some wording that said that at least 50% of the MBH distributions were to be used for construction, reconstruction, and maintenance. The definition of those are in 8-14-1.1. After that code had passed, um, the State Board of Accounts had sent up, out some updated forms to, to help the counties and the cities and towns kind of accumulate the information um, and allocate the resources such as salaries, equipment, um, and some of those types of things. And after we sent those out, we got a lot of questions on um, whether the forms were required, why did we need the forms, um, why couldn't we just use the annual report since you reported in there anyways. So we had started looking at the annual report and wanted to decide whether it could be something that we could utilize for that purpose. So we got together with NDOT and LTAP, um, the Cities and Towns Association, the Counties Association, and we got some representatives of the highway departments um, and formed a committee to kind of look at this annual report. As we started to look at the annual report and everyone kind of uh, communicated what they were using the report for, we had realized um, that NDOT was one of the biggest users of the report, and a lot of the information that they use in their federal reporting is coming from this highway report, at least what's available. Um, we also identified some other information that NDOT does need for their federal reporting, um, and realized that a lot of what NDOT reports on those federal reports impact the federal funding that comes to the state level. So we've been working on this for several months to make sure that this report's providing the information that we need for NDOT, for LTAP, and for the State Board of Accounts um, for any compliance purposes. So over the last several months, um, we've continued to meet and 
had several revisions, and this is our most up-to-date revision that you're going to be seeing on the screen. It will look a little bit different than the one that you have. I've highlighted a lot of the changes in red so that you can see them a little more easily. Um, and we did change a little bit of the wording on the instructions for traffic and safety, which we'll go over here shortly. Um, we are looking to get the report implemented for the 2018 year, which would be due 2019. We have some pilot counties and cities and towns that are going to complete the report for the 17, do 18, and give us some feedback on um, any problems they had accumulating the information or completing the report. So we'll know what we need to change. The other thing I will mention is the report that you're looking at is not the final version. This is a draft report. There may be some minor changes to it before it comes out, um, possibly some wording changes. We do need to do some formatting to it um, and check all the formulas. But otherwise, this is essentially uh, the direction that we are looking at. We're hoping that moving forward, currently this, the report's in an Excel format, which is nothing new. We've had that format before. Um, but looking forward, we're hoping to turn it into an online data entry so that you'll go in and submit it online. Um, you only need to submit it once and then you know, you'll be done. The information will be more readily accessible to the public um, and easier to extract some of the information that we need out of it. And we are working on that currently. Uh, hopefully, like I said, it, in the near future, we'll have that implemented and be able to get that out. We are going to do some more training other than just this webinar. We'll be going out into the field and doing some training. We're looking at road school and possibly some district quadrant meetings going north and south to provide some live training. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started on the report. We did, we added some things and changed some things, but we also removed some things. Uh, we eliminated the old section uh, four, which was the employee numbers and classifications. We eliminated section five, which is the equipment inventory, and section seven uh, for federal funding. The federal funding is already reported on the Gateway Annual Report, and some of the other information in DOT and LTAP either gets someplace else or did not need that information currently for any of their reporting purposes. We added a debt section, which is now section five, and we'll go over that here shortly. We also added an instructions tab. Previously, the instructions was in a separate document uh, and kind of included a bunch of information about the codes and the history and everything else. So we've kind of pared that down into just focusing on how to fill out the report. And we've included it in the first tab of the report so that you have one file open and you can go back and forth as needed. The other thing you'll notice as we go through here is with a lot of the definitions, we've added some drop downs and embedded definitions so that when you're looking for the definition of a certain category, it's going to be right there. And we'll go over that as we go through the tabs and I'll show you how to use those. So looking at the first tab, the instructions file, it's essentially the same as the old instructions. We've changed some of the language to match the newer format and the newer definitions. It goes through each section. So you'll see section one, then section two. And again, a lot of these definitions are embedded in those actual tabs. Section three, operating disbursements, construction and reconstruction activity. And then I highlighted in red, this is the language on this is just slightly different than the format that was sent out before. And again, what you're looking at is a draft. Before, when we get the final one, it, it'll be available. And again, through training, we'll let you know when the new forms are available, when you have to start implementing them. So going through the instructions, again, you'll have every section. And then at the bottom, you'll have where to file the reports. 
we have changed that. We've created for the State Board of Accounts a dedicated email so that all the highway reports will be coming into one location. It'll make it easier for us to track who's filed the reports and who hasn't. Uh, again, historically, the State Board of Accounts has just accumulated the reports and if, if there were inquiries about the reports or they requested the reports, we would provide the information. We are going to start tracking it. In the last couple of years, we've found that we've had several counties um, and cities and towns that have not submitted their report. And again, we found the same counties and cities and towns for several years have not completed them. We've also found that some of the information in the reports have just been carried forward from the previous years. So we've had some concerns about the accuracy. So we're going to implement some steps that when those reports come in, that they are in the correct format, the prescribed format that we're going to talk about today, that the information that everyone is filing their report, and the information is at least reasonable and not the same numbers as reported in the prior year. Um, you'll file the report with the State Board of Accounts, with NDOT, and with LTAP using the information in the report. And again, if there's a final copy that comes out and there's a different email address, make sure you're using the final um, version of the report, which will be available on our website just like it is now. The second tab, the cover sheet, nothing's really changed other than we've added the terminology bridges rather than just local roads and streets. Section one, we've changed this a little bit. Uh, section one is the financial, what we refer to as the financial statement. It provides beginning and ending cash balances. It's summarized information about operating receipts and disbursements and other receipts and disbursements. In column two, you'll notice that we added a total common fund. Previously, the other funds column also had a place to enter a beginning cash balance, which we felt was probably fairly difficult to enter if you're using funds that aren't completely dedicated, such as the general fund. You really wouldn't enter the beginning balance of the general fund. Uh, the information, so we, we've left the beginning and ending cash balances for the what we refer to as the three common funds, which is a motor vehicle highway local road and street, and cumulative bridge. The cumulative bridge is going to apply to the counties. And again, this, is, this report is for counties and cities and towns. So cities and towns, when you're looking at some of this and you realize that it does not apply to you, you do not need to complete the information if it does not apply to you. The operating receipts section, and again, this is the same as it was before. These numbers here, and it describes it in the instructions as well, will come from section two, they'll carry over automatically. So when you start to complete the report, you'll do section two and section three for the operating receipts and disbursements first, and those will carry over. The other receipts section, you will need to complete this. This information is not asked for on section two, uh, bond proceeds, loans and, notes and loans, interfund loans, and investments. And then moving down, the other changes that we've made is the general, and admi general administration and unallocated. There used to be an administration section and then there used to be a general undistributed section. And we felt like that was a little bit confusing when talking to some of the local officials, we were finding that some were putting everything in administration, some were putting a lot in undistributed, and so we're, we felt like that all should just be in the same general area um, because it seemed to be that the expenses that were put into both of those sections could really be put into one section. The maintenance and repair categories and construction and reconstruction are the same. We did move debt surface 
out of the operating disbursements and we put it down with other disbursements and we broke it out into principal and interest. And one of the reasons we did that is the report that NDOT submits to the federal government, it asks for principal and interest as two separate components. And we found that this is one of the most difficult information that NDOT has had to get from the local units because it's debt service related to highways and streets specifically. I know the counties and the cities and towns, they submit debt information in the annual financial report to the State Board of Accounts, and they also submit debt information to DLGS. And we did look at the information that's submitted through those two um, resources, and it would not easily provide information strictly related to highways and streets. We also talked to the associations and representatives for the counties and cities and towns, and the auditors and the clerk treasurers and controllers felt like it would be easy to provide that information to the highway departments so that it can be completed if they don't already have the information. The other thing I'll note on the financial section, the column T here for other funds, it's not a new column. We just eliminated the beginning and ending cash balances. And same thing here, the operating receipts and disbursements will carry over. But on these other categories, if you have multiple funds that have bond proceeds, uh, loans or notes or interfunds, you'll need to add those funds together to get the numbers for the total other funds column. And you'll want to make sure that you are keeping the documentation of how you came up with these numbers, whether you keep a separate spreadsheet or just a file with the information. You do need to support the numbers that are included in this report. Um, and I'll probably say this a couple of times, but the information that you provide in Section 1 and Section 2 and Section 3 with the cash balances, uh, the receipts and disbursements, all of those need to tie into the financial records of the physical officer, the auditor's funds ledger, the clerk treasurer's um, funds ledger. Those are the official records of what actually happened, the actual receipts and the actual disbursements. So you need to be able to tie those numbers into it, however you accumulate that information, whether you're doing it at the department level or whether you're getting the information directly from those funds ledgers. Section two is the operating receipts. There's not been a whole lot of major changes to this. As you'll see, the stuff that is highlighted in red, that all used to be blank. And each unit had to manually fill it out, type it in. However, one of the purposes of this report and defining the categories and the receipts and the disbursements is to provide a consistency from each unit so that we can accumulate information and we can provide that information to legislators, um, the public, and LTAP as they need it. We have a question. Can wheel tax have its own column instead of being included in other funds? Uh, we did consider that. Um, for counties, the wheel tax usually goes into the MBH fund. So we didn't, and historically, the three funds that we have noted here are the ones that they wanted specific information on. So we've included all other funds unless, and again, we could revise this in the future to include certain sources of revenue like that if there's information that the legislators want or NDOT or LTAP about what they're using those types of revenues for. They did respond, um, wheel tax doesn't go into MBH, I guess. Not always, but some do put it into the MBH fund. So I don't think by pulling out the wheel and surtax that we would be able to accumulate consistent information if that tax is going, some are putting it into MBH and some are not. So back to section two, the categories in red 
the reason we added those, um, we wanted to focus on the primary sources for the local roads and streets and bridges, and so that we could accumulate the information consistently from each unit. We went ahead and listed them, and anything that's not listed there, we put into other. And as you go down through there, and we did look at several highway reports and um, the different sources of funding for all of the funds that we've seen that have been used, and tried to pull out anything that we felt would possibly be of use to the legislators or NDOT as far as the funding and what it's being used for. So those are the definitions we came from. The other thing with section two and three, it can sometimes be a little confusing looking at it, but you'll see the same operating receipts listed at the top and then down at the bottom are gonna be your other funds. So at the top of the worksheet, you're gonna have your three common funds. And then this total, all other funds, it feeds automatically from the bottom section. So if you look at it, you'll see that there's a formula in it. If you go down to the bottom section, you're gonna see, see the same categories. But up here, you're going to need to insert your fund name. So for instance, that's where you'd put your wheel tax, uh, your community crossings grant, um, or if you use, if you have a budget out of your general fund or your seeded fund or something like that where you are using on the roads and streets or bridges, those you would add down there. Now on those, you only want to include the sources of revenue that you're using for those to the extent that you have spent those sources out of that fund. So that fund may not be completely dedicated to roads and streets. So you're gonna to wanna to focus on what you spent out of that fund and then the revenues that were used for those disbursements. Um, and again, you'll need to keep the documentation of how you came up with that, whether that's um, a list of all the expenditures from that fund and that's how you came up with that number, um, the sources of revenues or your budget, what you budgeted for the source of revenue to use it for. But when it's looked at, if this report's audited, you would need to support that with your documentation. This is probably gonna come down to, you're gonna have to work with the auditors and the clerk treasurers on those funds um, and then maintaining the documentation and who's gonna keep it, how you're gonna keep it, um, and in what format you're gonna keep that information. You do not need to submit that documentation with the annual report. You'll just need to maintain that for your own records. Section three is the operating disbursements. This is where you're gonna see a lot of the changes. Again, we already talked about the general administration and unallocated section. And here is one of the examples of the embedded definitions. You'll find that same definition on the instruction page, but rather than making you flip back on some of these new terminologies, we've just decided to embed them so that you can easily access them while you're going through the report. Uh, we worked with LTAP and NDOT on defining these. We're more focused on the financial information and how to get that information, whereas LTAP and NDOT have a much better understanding of what goes on out the highway departments and where, what categories things should fit into. So we really relied on them for the definitions of these types of categories. The maintenance and repair section is one of the sections. Again, if we go back to where the 50% rule came in, we when we started to discuss it, um, we had different feelings on what all qualifies. Currently, we cannot define for you exactly what qualifies under the 50%. We are still working with legislators to get a more clear definition of what the intent was uh, for the 50%, but we have different interpretations of what qualifies under maintenance and repair of the roads and streets. So we felt like 
if we took the maintenance and repair category and we broke it down into the various operations that the highway department does, then that might provide more information for the legislators on where the monies, what activities the monies are actually spent under. Um, we found just through our conversations that the maintenance and repair category is, you know, practically everything that's done that's not construction, that's not administrative. So we just wanted to define some of that. Also, some of that breakdown, such as the winter operations, some of that information like snow and removal of ice is actually asked for on the federal report that NDOT completes. And they, prior to dividing out this information, had no way of accumulating that information um, except for self-reporting. So the different categories, you'll see the definitions in here. And like I said, we're going to go out to road school. We're going to go out and do live training um, to to make sure that everyone understands, not everyone's gonna agree on these definitions um, of each of the categories or where some of the things go in these categories. But for this report, we're focusing on consistency. So we wanna make sure for this report, this is where these expenses go. Um, we have a question. Yes. Why are utility expenses and maintenance for street, light, and signals not operational? Why are utility expenses and maintenance for street, lights, and signals not operational? Street lights and signals? Mm -hmm. Not. Can you try to handle that one? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Shannon is and definitely. <laughs> trying to handle definitions as she said the definitions are open for interpretation and uh, anytime you get a committee together it's hard to, to get consensus on a, on a certain definition and so we struggle with some of the some of these uh, categories and how to define them um, and I think we'll sort this out over the next year as we go through these pilot uh, agencies maybe we have refined the definitions I think to answer that question, though, the, the first category, Chen, if you can scroll back up, on the uh, general administration and uh, unallocated, our focus, uh, what we interpreted that to imply is the utilities associated with, say, running your highway operations, your offices, your units, uh, and then on the street lights, or traffic signals, those would go into more of a, a specific area. I think right now we've got it. Unallocated. Where? Okay. We've got it under general administration and unallocated. No, oh, we do have it there. See, I'm, I'm confused already <laughs> with uh, where it should go. So, um, yeah, I guess what, what you're saying is that <clears throat> you get one utility bill and it covers everything. So it, it should go into that, that general. Unallocated, I guess. Unallocated uh, section instead of trying to break it down by uh, maintenance operations or construction. Yeah. That would get very, very difficult. Um, and we'll, one of the reasons that we broke things down the way we did was to alleviate some of the uncertainty for the units of government so that you would not have to sit and come up with reasonable uh, allocation methods because just as uh, Bob was going over, he, you would be trying to think, okay, under maintenance, exactly where would we put each of these utilities at? And sometimes the lines might even get blurred um, because in uh, are we talking about each day? Are we talking about um, a monthly, are we talking about um, by the actual activity? And so when it came to the utilities, it just made better sense to have it under the general administrative. But as Bob was also indicating, as the year goes by, if, if it really seems that it could maybe be broken out in one or two other categories easily, then that's what we'll try to do. But for the time being, 
it's better to put it in one place where we can all agree that this is where we will find it. And that is something that we do want to reiterate. Um, we went through several versions of this and Bob just sent me a new one yesterday. So it is still in the works um, and that's one of the things that we are hoping that the pilot will give us feedback on. The other thing, as I mentioned before, general administration and unallocated. Uh, we were really with the maintenance and repair and construction and reconstruction trying to focus on the roadways and the activities in, in that direction. Um, still working with legislators on definitions and, and that type of stuff. So it could be that before the final one comes out, there will be changes to something like that. Um, if there is, again, we're going to go over all that in training. And for at least this report, whoever's using it knows what's included in that category. Whereas currently when we talk to various different counties and cities and towns, it seemed that different units were putting things in different places. So for consistency's sake, right now these are the definitions and, and we're working towards more clarity on um, how to define these things and if they change, again, we'll send out communication and training on that. So the new categories under the maintenance um, are pavement, and there's a definition for the pavement. Bridges, this was one of the other categories that you know we, we changed during one of our revisions so that we could focus um, some funds may, like MVH could possibly be using for bridges and local roads and streets. So we wanted to make sure that we broke out um, to show which funds are being used for bridges. Winter operations and then right of way operations. And again, we've provided definitions. We may add to these definitions as we go along um, as needed if we find that there's other activities that maybe we have not resolved into one of the categories. And then there's a total for your maintenance and repair. These totals for each of the categories. Uh, Construction, these are the totals that are going to carry over to your section one. Construction and reconstruction, basically, we've defined it. We didn't add any separate categories to that. And then again, it's divided top portion to your general funds, and then the lower portion, that total from column R will feed up to the top making sure that you're inserting the same, you should have the same other funds on this tab as you do on section two. And then on section one, they all accumulate from that total column into one number. Shannon, yeah. before you go to that, can you go back and, and scroll down to uh, construction reconstruction? Yeah, that section. So one of the things that we've done at LSAP, and we've been pushing it for several years, and it's become a requirement in the last two years, is for in order to um, qualify for funding through the Community Crossing Grants Program, we have to develop an asset management plan. And um, so as part of this overall effort, we've been going around the state and training uh, agencies on what that includes and how you develop a plan and uh, what it's about. Uh, and it's more, more, more or less a, a philosophy or approach to better manage your, your network, your road and bridge network. Um, and also one thing we also have done besides develop a plan with, uh, with NDOT, and which is currently under uh, review and um, probably be altering it a little bit this, for next year's program. But we also put together a uh, asset management guide for Indiana, and it's now available at the LTAP website. But in this guide, you've got definitions and you've got terms uh, that, have, that are in that manual. We want to try to be consistent between the asset management uh, manual, asset management form requirements, 
in this annual operations report. As Shannon says, uh, in the past, uh, some of the activities are reported different ways. There's different ways to call something, to name it. Uh, I know we, on the asset management plans, for example, we've had maybe 10 or 15 terms used to describe asphalt pavement, a top mix or black top. Or, you know, it's just different ways to call, call something. And we're trying to simplify, and we're trying to get it so that we kind of standardize some of these terms and definitions, and also develop consistency between one data requirement and this data requirement for the annual operations reports. So, um, and so maybe I'll talk more about that in the next section. But I just want to kind of give some background on why we're defining these terms and these sections, and we're also trying to be consistent across the board with the different uh, data requirements. And again, moving forward, I mean, now with the electronic formats in Excel, we can extract a lot of the information, but like Bob said, with the different terminologies, terminologies used, you really couldn't use them on a comparative scale. But moving forward with an online data entry system, all of that information has to be reported consistently in order to accumulate it and for it to be comparative. Um, the construction reconstruction section here that we're looking at, it's going to be broke down into section 4A and 4B for roads and then for bridges. Previously, the report had a separate tab for roads for each fund that you used for construction and reconstruction. So we've kind of revamped that so that you're not using four or five or six different tabs. And the information in the red are some of the changes. Previously, the section over here that says type of work was just a column, and that column that is now type of work was a list of all of the individual projects. And through discussions, uh, like Bob had said, even with the asset management, the information that's available there, we try to focus on more summarized information on this report and dividing it out into the different funding that's used for that. So rather than reporting every project or every section of the road that was reconstructed, it's going to focus on the type of work that was done and the type of funding that was used. So for the type of work, there's going to be a drop down here and you're going to pick the type of work. And again, this is consistent with what's in the asset management um, as well so that we're using the same terminologies and should match up with your asset management plan. So you'll select a category such as new construction, and then you'll go on to complete the information. Now, the, the thing that you'll need to remember here is if you used different funding for new construction, you may have to choose new construction several times and then go over to the fund that's used, such as MBH and then LRS. And then the three columns here, you're going to complete the dollar amount that you used out of NBH for these various expenses, the dollar amount that you used out of LRS for these various expenses. So you're really going to want to focus on your funding and then the type of work that you did with your funding. When you're all said and done, we're down at the bottom, it's going to accumulate your totals for the various funds. The NBH total that you have here, if you only used NBH for roads, that total should be the same total that you have over here for your construction and reconstruction for MBH. Now, if you also used MBH for bridges, if you added your MBH total from the bridges tab here to your roads tab here, that should be your total on your disbursement tab for MBH there. So you you want to make sure that you're doing these checks and balances, but Section 4A and 4B breaks down what you've done under the construction and reconstruction categories. There's examples also. We have include some sample tabs of how to complete the information. Uh, we are still working on this section here. We're going to put formulas in that will 
tally up all of the different funds so that you don't have to manually add them down at the bottom. Um, this total here should equal this total here, broken out by fund. The bridges tab, we've changed some of the terminology in the first four categories or three categories, and then we added US Highway, as did we on the other. Um, NDOT had asked, you know, that if, it, if you had done work on the US Highway, that we kind of indicate that in the report. And the same thing on these categories here, the LPA costs used to be divided out into, I think, three or four different columns. We've just accumulated them into one column. We added engineering totals, and then we defined, used to say contract total. We defined that as construction contract total, so that it gives a little more information and breakdown on the costs of the projects. And the bridges category tab, it works basically the same as the roads. And again, there's a sample of that also. Shannon, could you go back? Oh. We have a question. Most of our personnel doing road work are paid from one of two line items, truck drivers and equipment operators, regardless of the activity they are doing. Daily activity is logged, but the break but breaking out exact personnel costs based on the activity they are doing seems daunting. Will there be some guidance offered on how to accomplish this? Um, as I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, uh, one of the reasons we sent out that the updated forms was for that purpose. Now, I know it kind of freaked everybody out because we heard from all 92 counties and I don't know how many cities and towns. Um, those forms, they are prescribed forms. You can utilize them. They will help you to allocate salaries to specific projects and costs. Um, I have found out through conversations with a lot of the highway departments that they have systems or a system that they already use to allocate a lot of those. It's something that each unit's gonna have to determine um, how they're gonna do that based on their own systems and how much of it fits toward a spe specific project and how, of it, how much of it just fits towards the general maintenance. So it is something that you're gonna have to determine individually, each unit, how to allocate those and how to track those expenses. And all we're gonna ask if we were to come out is that you're able to support those calculations and those costs with documentation. Um, and, so it's just kind of going to have to be up to each unit on how they allocate that. We have a few more questions. We don't typically report engineering costs as part of the capital outlay for construction and reconstruction. Are we supposed to do this so now? We always have. Yeah, I think it's been yeah. part of the form. Yeah. Uh, engineering costs, if they're related to a specific project, would always should have always been part of the construction cost or the reconstruction costs. So it didn't have a separate category before, so maybe it's just um, a misunderstanding of what's been left out. Um, that's one of the reasons I think Bob had suggested that we add a separate column for engineering so that it does make it a little more apparent that it should be included in those costs. And then if we need more lines on 4A or 4B, um, do we just add more lines or start a new sheet? Um, we'll, we're going to work on how to add more lines to that. We may just include some more, or we may include um, some way of adding more lines. Yeah, make it a, a macro. Thing. We might ha yeah, insert a macro or something where you push a button, it will add the lines that you need. One last question for this section. How is concrete patching supposed to be reported by mileage? Say you're doing patching on a uh, half mile on subdivision streets. <laughs> replaced are scattered throughout the half mile. Do we report what we did on this work or do we convert the actual area of patch to a total mileage? Uh, that, I think that would be unreasonable to convert it to a total mileage. You can just report that, uh, the activity. I guess we have, we kind of consolidated the, the work types down. So if it's, for example, just preservation, then you 
put that in the preservation category and just uh, say this is the cost for it. So no, we, we don't expect that to match up with the mileage, those small activities. Uh, while we're, is that, answer, is that the only other question right now? One more I have covered. We utilize funds from bonds. Are those still included in the other category? Um, yeah, if you, you should, when you issue the bonds, if they were issued for, specifically for the roads and highways, they would have a separate fund, so you would include that fund under the other funds category, whatever its name, whatever the fund name is. Okay. All right, so while we're on this section, uh, 4A, it, it is uh, different, and like I said previously, we're trying to not duplicate data entry between this form and the asset management form. So the asset management basically is a way to report your, your network, uh, what you have in your inventory, the condition it's in, and also some sort of a treatment plan over, I think it's a five year period. Um, so since you already have that put together, we decided not to include that. That's why we took that out on this, on this first column here and just kind of consolidated it into work type. Uh, these work types are gonna be the same on the asset management uh, plan uh, form as well. Uh, so we're trying to simplify, we're trying to consolidate, we're trying to eliminate some unnecessary uh, rework or double work with, between the two forms. One of our objectives was to, was to make this easier uh, for the, the person that's filling the forms out as well as the individuals on the other end in terms of collecting the data and being able to use the data. And since we can, collect data from one form and collect data from other form that complements the other one, then why not, let's, let's take that approach. And that's the kind of approach we're taking. Uh, and that's why you see some of these changes, uh, or what's the reason for some of these changes on this annual operations report. So, uh, you know, anytime you have a committee put together, uh, you get different opinions and different perspectives. And so we're trying to come up with compromises. And I'm sure we're going to uh, encounter the same over the next year as we get imp users to, imp to get involved with this and get their uh, recommendations. And we'll, we'll listen carefully and we'll make changes where changes need to be made. Okay, we're going to move on to section five, which uh, is a completely new section. Uh, this is focusing, again, on debt that was issued for the use of um, construction, reconstruction of roads and streets and highways and bridges. We focused on the bonds, there's a section for bonds, a section for notes and loans, and a section for leases. This is information that NDOT has really been lacking. Um, they've had to do a lot of estimation on a lot of units. There's just no way for them to collect debt information specifically for highways and streets and bridges from each individual unit. So this is gonna be very, I know Zach from NDOT is extremely excited about this section. Um, I'm sure some people aren't, but we were reassured this information will not be difficult to accumulate. Um, the categories where it says description of debt you're gonna call it whatever you call it at the local unit. If it's 2017 highway bonds, then that's what you're gonna put there. If you have multiple debt, you'll just go across for each debt issuance and you'll put it in there. Um, your beginning principal balances, if there's been any new bonds issued, you'd report them there. The principal amount and the interest amount paid and then that the outstanding principal will calculate all of this information, the total columns, again, should tie back to section one. If you had bond proceeds, note or loan proceeds, those are gonna go back to your debt section under that total. There'd be your new issuance. Same way with your principal and interest. It'd go back to your section one. Under debt service principal and interest. Now, 
this section for debt service principal and interest, that's going to include your bonds, notes and loans, and your leases there. So this is going to be a total of all three of the totals on section five. So if you added your principal and interest there, there, and down here, that should be the total that comes across. <clears throat> we might look into possibly putting some um, warnings or checks and balances in these in the format so that if those things don't agree, it will say this does not agree with section five debt. So you'll know um, that it doesn't agree and then you can go back and make whatever changes there are. So if that's possible, we'll, we'll see. Um, Zach's pretty excited right now. <laughs> But all of, all of this is actual information. It's from the financial records, and that's one thing that we really do want to focus on. It's not information that you calculated or estimated or just guesstimated. It needs to be real numbers. Um, in order for this information to be useful for the legislators or NDOT or LTAP or for us, it has to be accurate information. It has to be well supported by your documentation. And moving forward and looking forward, this, as I said before, this report is going to be more important. Um, it can provide a lot of information regarding um, future funding, um, the ability to get future funding, or to identify areas of need in certain areas. So we do want to make sure that it's accurate. Section six, um, I think Bob kind of mentioned this before. I think there's different terminology here, so we've just kind of uh, pared it down and, and made it a little more simple. Again, use the terminology that is in the report. We don't want these formats changed when you get them out there. You shouldn't be changing the categories to agree with your records or what you call it. Um, in order for us to accumulate this information, it has to be consistent. There's a sample of section six. Nothing really changed on that other than the terminology that I highlighted. And then section seven is your certification. Top portion is for the counties. The other portion is for the cities and towns. And that is basically the completion of the report. Uh, are there any more questions out there? There are. Um, this goes back to section one, I believe. Personal uh, personnel services include um, insurance, PERP, and other employee benefits, vacation, personal days, holidays. Should all of these expenses be assigned to admin and unallocated? Oh, actually, section three. Sorry. There. So, your general and administration and unallocated section, those are going to include all of your general expenses for personnel, um, your office staff, uh, the, the resources that are not assigned to maintenance and repair or construction activities. Um, and what were some of the specific categories again? Insurance, um, holidays, personal days, um, perks. We talked about yeah. that. And and those, those are tied to the person. That's a direct cost. So again, as um, Shannon was saying, if you're talking about personnel that are in the office, then that would be under your general admin. But if it's tied to a person that is doing direct road work, then it stays with that person because that is truly an overall cost for um, the maintenance of the road or construction of the road or whatever. And to expand just a little bit more on that, that was one of the reasons that we tried to have three broad, um, or rather four broad categories under maintenance and repair so that you could easily identify the personnel as they are uh, working on, if it's on bridges, or if they're doing pavement or winter operations. And also, we, we wanted to uh, make clear here 
that say like um, you are doing winter operations, but there's a deer in the road that you have to um, get out of the way. We don't mean for you then to go to another category for that 15 minutes or half an hour that that person is doing that. That would stay under winter operations. So things that are de minimis in nature, we're not asking you to track and to categorize. We are saying no, you know, put them into those broad categories. Three safety lines on the certification need to be signed. If you use a contracted town engineer who is not involved in day-to-day -day operations or funding, do you do they sign regardless? If you've got a, a contracted engineer involved uh, and you don't have a city engineer necessarily, uh, I would go ahead and have them sign that as certifying some of that information and um, and go ahead and, ha and just have them do that even though they're, they're contracted because they're going to be vital in getting some of that information that goes in the report and, and having them uh, sign off on it on the accuracy of it and the certification would be important. So yes, I would go ahead and have them do that. Is this basically going to take the place of showing 50% of funding is being spent on in MVH and RNS as to what they are being spent on? Um, we are hoping that this will provide the information that the legislators are interested in when it comes to 50%. Again, we're still trying to get some clarity um, because it says construction, reconstruction, and maintenance. Um, we're not sure what all they're including as maintenance of the roads. Uh, our original understanding was it was pavement on the road. So by breaking out these categories, once we get a more clear definition of what the legislators want to or intend to apply to that 50%, I believe this report should be able to provide that information. Back to the signatures. If we don't have a city engineer, do you leave the sign signature blank if you have no big project requiring a consulting engineer? Yeah, if you don't have a, a project engineer or city engineer or, or anybody like that, I guess you would have to leave it blank. If you've got a, somebody that's over the street department or somebody that, you know, like a, um, you would you would sign maybe on that line there if you get, you know, some supervision, I, I would assume there'd be some kind of supervision over, over that type of a work. So if it, if it doesn't fall under the, the names listed on that, on the form, you know, you could always um, make a make some kind of a note on there, or let us know that it, you know this is a different title, but that person is involved in that activity. Right now, we pay for culverts and tile out of cumulative bridge. Going forward, for the purposes of this report, are these um, are the are these works and expenses still going to be listed under bridge category? Well, the eight agencies put those activities into different categories. It um, bridges seem to be those activities uh, that are related to a particular structure, and uh, those activities that were put in the question there in terms of culverts or, or tiles uh, may be considered a stretch to be considered as bridge work and should be considered should be in the maintenance category uh, the general maintenance category for, for roads or uh, okay that's that's what we would like to see it instead of including in bridge work Where do we have the culverts uh, pick up the definitions uh, Pavement. Go up to the category. There you go. So it includes under drains, uh, ditches, pipes, catch basins. So we're we're putting those activities in, into the general maintenance uh, category. 
there are a variety of other maintenance activities besides winter operations that do not fit into the categories listed. Samples would be sign maintenance, street sweeping, signal maintenance. Where would these activities be posted? We've got, yeah, on the, on the signals, um, um, I think we put that under, go up to general maintenance. Yeah, how maintenance or repair, go to maintenance. Yeah, but that's not a separate category. You don't have a general maintenance. Well, it, it includes a lot of different activities. But all of those are sectioned off into these four sections. Another section for uh, Possibly. Again, this is see, this is feedback that we need to help refine the form. Uh, so we have those things listed yeah. here, but we do not have them. We do not have them categorized in any of these categories. It's listed in the general def the overall definition okay. for maintenance. So perhaps we right we might need to put it in the right nope. right away. I thought that's where we talked about it. Oh, that's well, that that's where we talked about putting it. Yeah. Probably need to, need to expand the definition, definition. right away. It's in the instructions. Yeah. Yeah. These are just general questions now. Um, just to be sure that for 2017 due 2018, it will just be some pilot units doing these reports, and the rest will not have to do this amount of detail until 2018 due 2019. Yes, that's correct. You'll use the current version of the Excel format that's available on our website now, what you've used before. And will cities and towns with populations less than 20,000 eventually going to be required to do this report as well? That has been discussed. Yeah, we looked at that because uh, right now, the, the 20,000 and above in all the counties basically represents about 90% of our network. If we drop it down to say uh, 10,000, it only bumped up about 4% of the network. So I think we're, we're comfortable with where we're at on the 20,000 level. So I, I think I don't, I don't see any need to, to move it down right now. And finally, will there be um, future training webinars, um, other opportunities um, speak with you to give us a chance to look over and develop any questions we may have? Um, you're always welcome to send questions to our office, um, and we, we're still sharing with the committee and, and communicating with the associations and our contacts at the locals. But yes, we want any feedback that you have. Um, we do want to make sure, as Bob had said and I said earlier, we, we want to make sure that we're able to accumulate this information, not create a whole lot of additional work and provide consistency throughout. We want to make sure we address everything now and put it all together. So, yeah, you're you're welcome to um, contact us at any time. You know, you can email us right now if you want to. Um, we again, we're going to keep working on the format. If there's things that we still need to change through the pilots, through training, through feedback that we get through emails, we are considering all of the information that we get. And um, yeah, there will continue to be training um, even if we we come up with something we go out and do training and it changes again we're going to make sure that we're communicating with everyone so that everybody's staying on the same page okay. um, you can email the Todd or I okay um, you can email the counties at counties at sboa.in.gov, or you can email cities and towns at. This is cities.towns at sboa.in.gov. You can also find our contact information on our website at www.in. Dot gov backslash sboa. Um, we also had we'll 
have some presentation information on the general county's website under the meetings materials. Um, so we're going to continue to put information out, check our websites on the county's page or the city's and town's page um, to get additional information. But if you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to contact us, call our office also. Uh, the number there is 317-232-2512. Do we have any more questions? Um, will these forms be available soon so that we can start our budgets and posting protocols so that the data will be easier to compile? Um, that's one of the reasons we got this form out now is so that you could go ahead and um, start focusing on these categories. I don't see that we are going to have significant changes in any of the expense line items or anything like that. Um, I think, if anything, we're going to have more clear definitions and added language. But I think you could go ahead and utilize what we're going over today moving forward. And um, on the more general category um, on maintenance that we were just talking about, um, such as on the lights, we will get that information out here very quickly, I would say. So for everybody to yeah. before Christmas, <laughs> I, I won't go before Christmas. <laughs> it, it will be out there so that it'll be such that you can use it with this coming new year. So let me uh, also say that uh, kind of think back about a year ago. One of the comments that we've heard uh, from various people around the state is. And it, it kind of cynical, like why why do we submit this data? It just kind of goes into a black hole and nobody looks at it or used it. Well, I kind of go back to about a year ago when we were uh, putting together a, a need report, needs assessment report for the local needs to send to the General Assembly. And we used the data that we had collected from that year's asset management plan. Anyway, we put it all together and we calculated a need and sent it to the General Assembly, and they really have to make deliberations to come up with their funding uh, requirements or the funding amounts. Um, and so what we're hearing is that in the state government, as well as maybe in local government, is data-driven decisions. And uh, this, this information is going to help uh, paint a report card that the General Assembly can use and get an indication of what kind of return they're getting on their investment with this uh, increased funding, not only from the House Enrollment Act 1002 this year, but also last year's called Community Crossing Grants Program. Community Crossing Grants Program is going to be going on and continues to grow, so that that's going to be a good source of funds. But the, uh, the legislators want to know where the money is going, what the money is being used for. So that's why it's important to report this information. It's kind of like a report card that there's going to be generating. We are also, right now, today, we're receiving bids and quotations on a data management system that's going to house this data, as well as asset management data and some other data sources that are going to be of value to our state legislature, as well as local government uh, individuals as well, uh, county councils or commissioners, city councils. So this is important. Uh, and it's going to help us to uh, describe what we're doing and also help us in making future decisions, of, for example, like on what treatment works best, uh, what's, the long, what's the life of a treatment, and uh, how much money is it costing, for example, to make that concrete patch or to do chip and seal on a road. Uh, so all this information is going to be useful, and that's why it's important to report it. And just to add to what Bob has said about the information being useful, this is a public report, so citizens can access this report as well. And I know Todd and I will probably already testify that since the increase in taxes for the roads, we have citizens calling and wanting to know where they're spending that money because their roads aren't fixed. So um, transparency is really important. And I think this report with the more detailed information is really going to provide the useful information that they can say, here's where the money went. This is what they spent it on. These are the activities they spent it on. So it, it is information that people do want to know. 
We have two more questions that came in um, about the form. How will we receive the most current version of the form? Will it be available online? Will we receive an email about it? Um, how will we get it and know that it is the most current version? Um, we won't continue to send out every revision of the form until we get to a, a point. Um, if we do a training, upcoming training, we'll send out the most current version at that time. Um, when we get it completely finalized, we'll, we'll communicate that using the associations um, to distribute information. Um, but we're not just going to send out weekly revisions of every little thing that we do until we do upcoming training or until we get to the point where we were finalized and that's where it's at. And finally, for this year, are we still using the old form? For 2017, which is reported in 2018, yes, you're using the form. Um, you'll find it on our website. That's the other thing I will say is don't use last year's format and try to update it. Uh, we've seen variations of those forms where names have been changed. Um, they're not using the current prescribed form. And again, you want to use the form that's out there, even currently, the way it's prescribed, using the categories that are in that report. Okay, that is it. Okay, um, is there anything anybody else would like to say? Huh? All right. Okay, thank you to all of our speakers. As mentioned, I will be sending out a recorded link of the webinar later today. And thank you to all of our participants for joining us, and have a great holiday season.